Now let's see how to form the rabbit joint. This step is a rabbit, also known as a rebate. It also works cross grain, and then it's called a filister. You often see a rabbit like this in the back edge of a case piece where it's been let in to accept the back panel. This is one of those tasks that shows off the amazing versatility of the chisel. So we're going to start off with the marking gauge, marking out the dimensions of our rabbit. So mark it in the edge and mark the other dimension in the face. The way you do this with a chisel is using the chisel bevel down you start right at the end lightly taking a shaving and working your way back and what you're trying to do is establish an initial step, an initial shoulder. So notice I can take advantage of that levering action of the chisel to lever it out of the cut before it goes too deep. But I can go all the way down to that gauge line. Now that I have that initial shoulder established along there, I can use that to guide the chisel in further work. And I can take longer pairings here because I have a bit of a guide surface. And don't worry about the depth here. It's wobbly up and down. We'll clean that up later. But notice how I can now register the side of the chisel up against the shoulder I've established. And as necessary, I drop it to lever that chip out. This rough stage of the process produces a pretty rough surface, but as long as I don't cross my line, it doesn't matter. I'll be able to clean that up later. Now, particularly if you're working in hardwood and you have a nice long chisel like this, one thing you can do is tuck this up into your shoulder, use your hand here as your fine steering and guide, and now you can lean your whole body into that cut. Again, using the bevel as your depth control. So this gives you a lot of power. Once I'm down far enough, now I'm coming in from the other direction, and with the chisel down flat on its back, I'm taking this end down exactly to the line. Just have to be careful about the chisel diving in and going too deep, because I no longer have that depth control provided by the bevel. But now that I've got that flat registered, I can come across here like this, and clean up that surface. So I'm taking advantage of my long flat back and the fact that I've removed most of the waste wood so it's an easy job to pare out the remainder. And if there's some problem spot it's often easy to come out like this and skew the chisel and go across as I push. So I've got this, the chisel skewed and I'm running it down the length of this. Now here I have to be careful that the corner doesn't dig into the sidewall here because there's nothing holding it back there. So it's a combination as usual of different motions along different dimensions trying to work the tool in the best way that cooperates with the grain. I'm getting very close to my line here, just very carefully pair it across. And here again I'm using my fingers as the main driver. My hand in the back is really just providing some extra power. But the fingers up front are what's providing all the fine control. So now that's right at the line. If I'm careful it will dive in below, if I'm not careful, it will dive in below the line. 
come back in this direction and do some cleanup along there. Skew the chisel a bit so I can get to that one little spot. And that's good. Now the one thing I can do here is run the chisel along this wall to kind of smooth it out. And if there's some fibers left in there, the last thing you can do is simply use the corner of the chisel as a scraper. And scrape it clean. So that's our first example of a long grain rabbit done with plain old bench chisels. Last we have the moving philister plane. So what's moving about it is it has this fence on the bottom that sets the side depth. It also has this foot fence here that sets the vertical depth. So you've got two depth stops here on this, which means that I don't have to mark anything on my, my workpiece. It also has a knicker for my cross grain work. I'll go ahead and leave it down for the long grain cuts here, but it's not necessary. The handling of this is similar to the skew rabbit plane, but now I need to register this fence up along my edge. So instead of my fingers, I have that fence. I start running it across. And I just keep taking shavings until this brass foot bottoms out on the workpiece. But the only challenge in using these planes for this type of work is to be sure that you're not pitching them over a little bit. Make sure you hold them up straight. I think I have one more shaving in it. Okay, it's bottoming out here, but it's still not bottoming out at this end. So, just a little partial shaving there. So now the moving philister rabbit is done. That was long grain. On cross grain is where it really shines. Mm -hmm.